Presented by Caltech. Good afternoon. So, earthquakes have always been terrifying phenomena, but contrary to our instincts, they are becoming more deadly as technology is becoming more advanced and our cities are growing. And along with our cities, grow the number of questions that scientists, earth scientists are called to answer, and earthquake engineers are called, the problems that earthquake engineers are called to resolve. So my story today is about earthquakes, about the risk they pose to megacities like Los Angeles, and the research that we at Caltech and JPL are carrying on to understand and hopefully engineer uh, the earthquake-resilient megacities of the future. So if there is a place that we could call the birthplace of earthquake science and engineering, uh, that would be Caltech. It was here where the dream of the first uh, seismic network that we spanned the West Coast in order to understand, first to understand earthquake physics was born. And it was here that later on the, the foundations were put for what we call today the modern uh, uh, earthquake resilient or resistant uh, building code. But the challenges that earthquake engineers and scientists faced 100 years ago were very different from the ones we face today. For one thing, the infrastructure was very sparse, and therefore the problem was concentrated on how to make buildings withstand earthquakes with limited technology and with very many unknowns about the mechanics or the behavior of buildings. And on the same time, technology was in fact a luxury, and sometimes it was aborted for and was replaced by more uh, natural and reliable resources or methods of, uh, of construction, like the picture on the right-hand side of the, of the mules constructing the Los Angeles aqueduct. And of course, earthquake engineering and earth sciences have made tremendous progress since, but our cities have also grown tremendously uh, alongside. And in fact, uh, designing buildings to sustain earthquakes is not enough anymore because cities as big and complex as Los Angeles comprise uh, systems of systems of infrastructure, some of which were actually built 100 years ago. So they age at different rates, they are subjected to different risks, and when we design cities like this, we don't only want to make sure that there's each one of those systems will perform well during an earthquake, we want to make sure their interconnections will also perform well, that there is the redundancy built in them, but on the same time, if there's failure, that we can uh, we can restore it as fast as possible so that uh, we protect the safety and the health of the public and that we put together uh, the economy bounces back as fast as possible. So this is obviously a really big problem, but we, we at Caltech here, uh, with a, a very strong collaboration between uh, mechanical and civil engineering at the, at the division of Engineering and Applied Science and the Seismological Laboratory, Geology, and JPL, I will show you some of the elements of the research puzzle that we're trying to put together in order to resolve this problem. So the, one of the things we look at is earthquake source physics. This answers questions like how do earthquakes start, how do ruptures propagate, how do earthquakes stop. We, de we develop models, computational models or theoretical models to test those questions. We use uh, high-end computational facilities to run those models. We then take the results we compare with uh, uh, measurements in the field or experiments that we design to specifically address some of the aspects of those problems. And then we look at the discrepancies between our models and the, predict or the observations, and we improve our models continuously until we converge eventually. We also study ground deformation and ground failure. On the pictures that you see from Christchurch and Denali and the research uh, earthquake uh, in Ecuador, um, so uh, ground deformation and ground failure effects, liquefaction or very large uh, surface exposure of uh, fault rupture. And in order to study those effects, we look at them at multiple different scales. Uh, to study liquefaction, for example, we look at uh, 
behavior of each individual particle of, of uh, sand and how they interact with each other. And at the same time, we look more globally at the problem of uh, ground performance, a ground deformation. For example, this is a simulation that we run in my laboratory to understand the physics of how mountains concentrate energy on the surface and how they become structures that are located on top of mountains are at more risk than structures that are located uh, at the base of, uh, of those mountains. We then feed the models of our Earth sources, physics, and our uh, 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 soil behavior, and ground performance, and ground deformation into simulations like this that simulate scenario earthquakes of future possible catastrophic events for the region. And one of the things that we do is we compare again results with measurements, observations from the field, and we try to improve our simulations. On the same time, we use the ground shaking predictions to evaluate and assess the resilience of our systems uh, uh, in the uh, city of Los Angeles today. One of the interesting phenomena that I wanted to point out here, you see that the San Andreas Fault a rupture scenario in this case runs from Palm Springs to Lancaster, but th there is a chain of of basins that channels energy towards Los Angeles, and those waves are trapped in those sediments, and they are amplified, and their duration is actually prolonged as they bounce back and forth in the, in the basin of LA. We also study the response of uh, infrastructure to, to ground shaking. Uh, here I'm showing you again uh, examples from the work that we do in, in my lab on the top. Uh, from pile foundations to waterfront structures, uh, think of Port of Los Angeles, for example, underground structures, pipelines, tunnels, uh, water tank, water storage tanks, and then dams, embankments, and bridge abutments. Compare this simulation with the simulation of the mountain. The mountain was more dramatic, but this is also more complicated because it's a man-made structure with a surface layer that is a lot stiffer, so there is a lot, a, a, a lot more complex uh, wave propagation phenomena occurring. And on the bottom, we also monitor the behavior of structures that we have in downtown LA. We have uh, the com what we call the community seismic network, a very densely instrumented set of buildings that we look at their response to small earthquakes or earthquakes that occur pretty much every day. We try to improve our models of building performance, and then we, we assess the performance in potential future earthquakes. And we combine our uh, understanding of earthquake source physics with the dense network that is, you can see now exists as the realization, if you will, of the dream of 100 years ago, and our principles, our understanding of principles of uncertainty to develop earth, uh, early warning, earthquake early warning systems, which when fully adopted by federal agencies and the private industry and the public, will eventually uh, be able to mitigate structural damage, uh, prevent cascading failures from one system to the other, and save lives. A secret behind putting all those pieces of the puzzle together is not only the strong collaborative work that we do between seismology and engineering and uh, our facilities at JPL, but my home institution, Mechanical and Civil Engineering, has a new home with cutting-edge facilities where we get to interact with colleagues of ours who work in areas not necessarily related to earthquakes, but they, that comprise, consist, if you will, of elements that will form uh, multi-hazard resilient cities of the future. Hazards uh, ranging from earthquakes all the way to cyber infrastructure. So think fluid dynamics in terms of tsunami loading or floods or rainfall or uh, sea level rising because of climate change, stronger materials energy storage and energy product production, and then automated systems and their resilience. So when the big one hits Los Angeles, which was recently characterized as the most at-risk city in the world outside of Asia, that was the assessment that uh, an insurance company made after the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant uh, um, accident, 
the world will definitely will not split in two. And as, as Lucy Jones actually said, when there's a chasm, there's no earthquake. So, but the day after might very well look like this. And these are a lot of the pictures that I have taken from field trips that I've, I've gone to uh, to do field observations after earthquake disasters. And these are high-rise buildings, some of which were built according to building code provisions that are similar to the US building code on sediments that are similar to the thickness of the sediments of downtown LA. Uh, on the, on the, right -hand side, uh, the left-hand side here, you see uh, the disaster of uh, the collapse of non-ductile concrete buildings, old buildings with uh, less reinforcement that uh, basically collapse like chalk uh, in a non-ductile form during earthquake shaking. And on the bottom is a demonstration of a typical cascading um, failure effect of a network, uh, a pipeline that failed and there was no water to put the fire off, which in turn uh, uh, damaged the telecommunication and electricity system. And the reason why the day after would look like this is because Los Angeles is in fact at risk. And the two examples I picked to show you are the fact that all imported water conveyor systems cross the San Andreas Fault. But all those pipelines are subjected to, are going to be subjected to really large deformation. So there is a need for us to understand how those pipelines perform when they are subjected to ground deformation if the fault rupture propagates all the way to the surface, whether they're going to break, and if there is redundancy and resilience built into our water conveyance system. And, on, and I, there's also 1,500 non-ductile concrete buildings in downtown Los Angeles, which are not... Uh, permitted to be built anymore according to the modern U.S. building code provisions, but before San Fernando earthquake, they were prevalent in the, in the area. The good news is that we can use simulations like the ones I showed you before, and we can create, uh, 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 we can assess the risk, and we can quantify to some extent, the resilience of our city. And using results of those simulations and the quantifications like the shakeout scenario, the results of which I'm showing you here, of what will happen if a magnitude 7.8 earthquake hits Los Angeles, we can educate the public, we can prepare ourselves for, when, for what to do when the um, the, the big one strikes LA, and we can also make public policy, translate science into uh, implementation for the retrofit of key systems that uh, uh, make, uh, ensure the health, the safety, and the economy of our city. But we have a long ways to go yet. A lot of those models are still empirical and based on earthquake measurements from other places of the world. And at the same time, they are, a lot of them are, are evaluated on the basis of the fact that they're not connected to each other. And Caltech is at the right place, has the right expertise, and the right collaborative um, uh, connections, and is at the right time to actually take a step back and look at megacities as, as they are, systems of systems of networks that are connected to the ground, that deforms, that fails, and that is controlled by the uh, ground shaking that originates at the, at, the, at the source of earthquakes. And following in the footsteps of a legacy of 100 years of strong collaboration between earthquake science and engineering, our vision is to use our expertise and our facilities, our natural laboratory, Southern California, and observations around the world to put the foundations of what we hope will, fo will form the basis of the design of earthquake-resilient megacities in the future. Thank you. <laughs>